Hello everyone, I'm Free AZ, and I'd like to introduce everyone to a One Piece theory I've been developing for the last couple years. First off, spoilers for up to chapter 1080 in the manga, which is in the arc after Wano for all the anime onlys. If you're not caught up, there will be heavy spoilers. This theory explains many odd choices Oda has made throughout the last few years, such as hyping up multiple crewmates to join at the end of Wano, only for none of them to join. Kid and Law's crew seemingly being taken out of the running so early. Why we got one crewmate at the very beginning of the new world, only to go over ten years without a new crewmate. And a couple of strange comments Oda has made about getting new crewmates. The basis of this theory is that Luffy's line about gathering ten crewmates in Chapter 1 was actually foreshadowing Luffy needing ten crewmates per sea, with a total of thirty crewmates at the end of the series. Now many people may consider that outlandish right off the bat, however I've gathered a lot of evidence and I believe I have a pretty strong case. Oda has been reinforcing the idea of both 10 and 12 man crews, yet they are contradictory at the same time. The actual relevance of these numbers is that the 10 is supposed to represent the 10 crewmates Luffy met in each sea, while the 12 plus Luffy making 13 represents the inverse of what the actual final number of crewmates will be, 31. One of the biggest criteria I had when creating this list is that the characters who end up joining are all characters who have been important parts of the narrative in multiple arcs. This is the only way Oda could have done this in an organic way. He slowly introduced the final crew over time and gave them multiple chances to develop their relationship with Luffy. The only exceptions to this are Gaimon, who is made to be the exact opposite, to only appear in one chapter just to already be at Laugh Tale when Luffy finally reaches it and some of the New World crewmates, as the nature of Luffy having to meet them in the latter half of the story means they haven't had as much time to re-enter the story, like Tama and Yamato. Oda wanted to tell the story of a large pirate crew, but knew having that many main characters would be a problem. He set up a core crew, the characters he knew he wanted to focus on, and had Luffy meet the supporting members of the crew over time, knowing they would come together at the end in order to take down the world government. Rereading the series after the ending will give the series a completely different context, as Luffy was constantly meeting future crewmates. Many of the characters that people did theorize would end up joining the crew, only to be disappointed, actually will end up joining the crew. In the Lodestar Island arc, right before Laugh Tale, there will be a great war with many factions vying to find the One Piece. During the chaos, many of Luffy's allies will end up on the Sunny seeking shelter, and by extension, will end up on Laugh Tale when Luffy finally reaches it. These are the characters that will recreate the Roger Laugh scene. After learning the truth of the Void Sentry, these people will end up making a vow over Sake to storm Mary Joie, take down the world government, and fulfill the will of D. Which leads me to this chart. Oda knew from the beginning that One Piece would be about a journey around the world. From the beginning, the Grand Line is set up specifically for this. In order to find the One Piece, Luffy needed to circumnavigate the globe. I believe that before the series even began, Oda knew this, and charted out Luffy's journey. This is how he was able to create such an interwoven narrative and world from the beginning. He then set it up so that every island, Luffy met either a crewmate or another form of Nakama, but with some rules attached to throw people off. If this chart is correct, we can accurately predict which arcs will happen going forward, including every island we know Luffy is going to visit or is very likely to visit. I am going to use this video to both give a rough outline of how we will go from a 9 to a 30 man crew, and why I believe this is the final crew. Over the next few weeks, I will be releasing videos about each of these arcs going forward, and what I believe we can expect from them. I may gloss over certain details going forward, but I will elaborate them on their respective videos to save time on this video. I will leave links below to both the full 30 crewmate chart and the chart of Luffy's journey, so you can look at it for yourself as I explain everything. However, before I explain the patterns within the final crew and take Luffy's journey step by step, I would first like to explain the initial inspiration behind this theory. The initial clues that led me to create this theory were Roger's crew, Blackbeard's crew, and the relation to Luffy's crew. First we'll look at Roger's crew. Oda made a point to show us exactly how many crewmates joined Roger at Laugh Tale including designs and names for each one of the crewmates. Leaving Shanks and Buggy behind, Roger reached Laugh Tale with 26 crewmates. 
Oda has reinforced that Luffy will end up surpassing Roger, so why didn't he make Roger's crew smaller so that Luffy can surpass him in that way as well? Most of these characters will not end up being important to the story, so why introduce them if they will just be a point against Luffy surpassing Roger? This is what led me to realize that the 10-man crew line from Chapter 1 could actually be foreshadowing Luffy meeting 10 crewmates per state, with Luffy reaching Laugh Tail with 29 crewmates. Why 29 instead of 30? The 26 crewmates that Roger went to Laugh Tail with are actually the key piece here, as when you flip the 6 180 degrees, you get a 9. Now that may sound ridiculous, but we already have evidence to support a 6 becoming a 9 in the story. In Goro Owase, the Japanese number game that Oda has hinted at being important for the crew's devil fruit powers, Gomu reads as 56. If you flip the 5 upside down, you get a 2, and if you flip the 6 180 degrees, you get 29, which is the Goro Owase number for Nika, connecting the two names of Luffy's devil fruit. Nika roughly translates to a toothy grin, meaning that Luffy will reach Laugh Tail with 29 Nika crewmates, a smile. The 30th and final crewmate to officially join will be Vivi, who I believe will be captured by Emu and Mary Joie at that point in the story, making Mary Joie a Vivi rescue arc. Now on to Blackbeard's crew. Right around the same time Luffy started his journey and gathered his initial crew, Blackbeard killed Thatch, got his first devil fruit, and gathered his initial crew. When we first learn of Blackbeard, his crew was shown to be the exact same size as Luffy's official crew at the time with an emphasis being placed on there being only five men. The next time Blackbeard expands his crew is when he gets his second Devil Fruit, gaining five crewmates from Impel Down. At this time, it seems like Blackbeard's crew is actually one man larger than Luffy's. However, in retrospect, the same place that Blackbeard recruited these crewmates was the same place Luffy met his next crewmate, Jinbei. Over the time skip, Blackbeard gained one more crewmate, the 10th Titanic Captain. We are only given this information after Jinbei declared his intent to join the crew, with the 10th captain being kept secret. This was once again to reinforce the idea of 10 crewmates, and I believe the 10th Titanic captain will not be revealed until we get the 10th crewmate. The pattern so far has Blackbeard gaining crewmates every time he gets a new Devil Fruit, so when Blackbeard does finally get his long-awaited third Devil Fruit, his crew will expand once more. I believe I know who will join Blackbeard at this time, the only thing at this point in the story that can top Blackbeard gaining the level 6 prisoners of Impel Down, the former members of the Rocks Pirates. Kaido, Big Mom, Weevil as a stand-in for both Whitebeard and Cheeky, Stussy as a stand-in for Buckin, and Kuzan. Kuzan obviously was not part of the Rocks Pirates, and we already know he is part of Blackbeard's crew. However, I do not believe the Blackbeard Pirates trust him enough to make him a captain yet but he will rise in the ranks during this reveal. When Blackbeard forms his new crew, we will get a new panel of his full crew, just like the last two reveals of his crew. Kuzan is one of the few characters that could stand as imposing as characters like Kaido and Big Mom. I believe this will happen when we return to Wano, and that when Blackbeard gets his 15-man crew, Luffy will also get a 15-man crew. Now, Blackbeard has heavily been tied to the number three. And as such, I believe Blackbeard's crew and Luffy's crew will fight on three separate occasions. First, on Full Lead Island, with the 10 Titanic captains and Kuzan versus the then 10 or 11 member Straw Hat crew. Second, during the Lodestar Island arc, right before Laugh Tale, during a war to find the One Piece with Blackbeard's 15-man crew against Luffy's 15-man crew. Finally, the last fight will be at God Valley, at the very end of the series, with Luffy's full 30-man crew fighting what will be the final Blackbeard crew, a 30-man crew filled with many of the villains throughout the series. This is part of the reason why Oda was so hesitant with killing off characters, hero or villain. He knew he would need many of them alive for the final fight at the end of the series. Now I'm going to go over the chart of the final crew, and the patterns I've found within it. I would like to start by explaining the importance of the final crewmate Luffy met, and the next to officially join the crew, Bonnie and her connection to Vivi. Just about everyone who believes the 10 crewmate theory believes that Vivi will be the 10th and final straw hat, and if the 10-man crew theory is correct, I believe it as well. However, I believe very soon, Oda will make it seem like Vivi is going to join the crew, and seemingly confirm the 10-man theory, only for her to be kidnapped by Emu. Vivi's picture was the only one Emu did not destroy, and they took it with them to the Empty Throne. For whatever reason, Emu has an interest in Vivi, 
and is therefore a high priority target for the world government. Now, Oda may or may not make it seem like Vivi is finally about to join the crew, but eventually we will get the reveal of the next straw hat is Bonnie. Bonnie and Vivi are direct parallels of each other, both being princesses with seemingly dead fathers being hunted by the world government. Kuma, Bonnie's father, has the devil fruit that completes the Goro Oase devil fruit theory. Oda has kept the name of Bonnie's devil fruit a secret, and I believe it is because it also completes the path. Kuma also protected the Sunny and the Straw Hats themselves for unknown reasons. If Bonnie discovers the reason for this, it could give her the motivation to join the crew. It is also important to note that Bonnie is very likely a clone, and whether she is a clone of Big Mom or whoever, she is narratively a clone of Vivi. What I think Oda is going to do in the long term, however, is make Bonnie the ultimate tragic woman backstory in the series. In a way, she would be a clone of all of them. On the final list of crewmates, Bonnie is both the final crewmate Luffy himself meets in the Grand Line, and the 30th and last overall. Zoro met Bonnie at Sabaudi, which will be important later, but Luffy himself did not meet her until Egghead. Oda started off the final saga with Luffy meeting the last crewmate he would meet, though she will be the next to officially join the crew. On the other hand, Vivi was the first crewmate Luffy met in the Grand Line, at Reverse Mountain, and will be the last to officially join at Mary Joie, the exact opposite end of the world where Luffy met her. In the same vein, Sabo is the first crewmate Luffy met in the East Blue, and Smoker is the last. They are the only Logias on the entire crew, being smoke and fire for the Sun God. Now before I go over the patterns I've found on the full crew, I need to go over Buggy's role on this list. He would be the jester of the crew, and act as a wild card, like a joker in a deck of cards. He is literally a wild card in the story, being an ex-Roger crewmate, an ex-warlord, and an emperor, all at once. He is everything, and as we know, nothing at the same time. He can break the rules. Now I'd like to go over some of the patterns I've found in the full crew chart. All of these patterns share a rule, which makes me more confident that they are truly a pattern and not just a coincidence. That shared rule I call the 8-2 rule. Oda makes a rule for all the crewmates of a specific sea. Eight will follow the rule, and two will break it. To start, we have the sex of the crewmate. In the East Blue, there are eight male crewmates and two female crewmates, Nami and Tashigi. In Paradise, we have eight male crewmates and two female, Vivi and Robin. In the New World, it flips, and we have eight female and two male crewmates, Jinbei and Momo. Next, we have the class of the crewmate. In the East Blue, we have eight non-royalty crewmates and two royalty, Sabo and Sanji. It may be important to note that they are both royalty who rejected their status. In Paradise, we have eight non-royalty crewmates and two royalty, Vivi and Mr. Two, who became the Queen of New Kamala. In the New World, we have eight royalty crewmates and two non-royalty, Jinbei and Tom. This is why Carrot became the leader of the Minx, and Kaido named Yamato Shogun of New Onikishima, so they could officially become royalty. Now, the next rule I originally wrote is this. The East Blue has eight humans without devil fruits, and two with devil fruits. Paradise is reversed, and the New World is eight non-human races and two humans. This rule works as is, however I believe it is actually two separate rules that we do not have all the information for yet the race and devil fruits of the crewmates. In the East Blue, we have eight human and two non-human crewmates. This could be Sanji as a Germa experiment, potentially with Lunarian DNA, and Usopp or Buggy as part of some long or weird nose trot. In Paradise, Luffy meets eight human and two quote-unquote non-human crewmates. These are either Chopper, who was born a reindeer, Frankie, who is a cyborg, or Brooke, who technically died and lost most of his body. In the New World, we have eight non-human and two human crewmates, Momo and Tama. Now on to the Devil Fruits of the crew. In the East Blue, we have eight non-Devil Fruit users and two Devil Fruit users, with Buggy doing his wildcard thing, Sabo and Smoker. In Paradise, we have eight Devil Fruit users and two non-Devil Fruit users, Vivi and Frankie. In the New World, we have eight Devil Fruit users and two non-Devil Fruit users, Jinbei and Shirahoshi. Carrot does not have a Devil Fruit yet, however I believe she could be a prime candidate to get Kuma's Devil Fruit, a paw going from a bear to a bunny. Now the final A2 rule I've found 
is something very important to this theory overall. Luffy meets each crewmate at a different island, except for Tib. These are always a pair, and are the last crewmates Luffy gains in each state. In the East Blue, at Logtown, Luffy meets Tashigi and Smoker, marine partners. In Paradise, at Sabaudi, Luffy meets Kid and Law, his two main rival captains. In the New World, at Wano, Luffy meets Tama and Yamato, two friends of Ace. Because of Bonnie's relationship with Vivi, she needs to be last, so she bumps Tama and Yamato over one spot. The reason this rule is so important is because it made me realize something very important to the chart of Luffy's journey. Each of these locations where Luffy met two crewmates is a location we know Luffy is visiting, left, and will revisit by the end of the series. Logtown gets its name from prologue and epilogue, so we know Luffy will return there by the end of the series. Luffy has already left and revisited Sabaudi, and it has been heavily hinted that we will return to Wano at some point. This rule also applies to other islands Luffy revisited. However, instead of a second crewmate, Luffy met a ship or animal in Kama instead. I will go over this more in detail when I go through Luffy's journey. However, first I would like to go over some of the trios I have found on this list. Just like the monster trio and weakling trio Oda has set up so far, there are other trios that I have found throughout this list. I'd like to start with what I consider the most important trio, the three first mates. On Dawn Island, Luffy met Sabo, who ended up becoming the second in command of the Revolutionary Army, making him Dragon's first mate. On Goat Island, Luffy met Kobe, who ended up becoming Garp's protege. Garp does officially have a first mate in Bogart, but if he, say, dies trying to save Kobe, Kobe would be there to take his spot. Regardless of whether Bogart dies, Kobe has been set up to inherit Garp's will, making him, in a way, Garp's first mate. In Shell's town, Luffy met Zoro, who would be the first crewmate to officially join the crew, making him Luffy's first mate. The reason I say this trio is so important is that regardless of whether my theory is true or not, this is true. On the first three islands Luffy visited, he met the three first mates of the Monkey family, and that seems very intentional to me. This is why Oda has kept the first mate role so up in the air all this time. In a way, Luffy will have three first mates. These are all people close with and important to Luffy, and the three crewmates that have known him for the longest. The next trio is the Pirate Royalty Trio. Luffy as the Pirate King, either Boa, Bonnie, or Vivi as the Pirate Queen, and Buggy as the Pirate Jester. Oda could also be making a Pirate Queen Trio, with Boa already being the Pirate Empress, and Bonnie and Vivi as the Pirate Queen and Princess. Next is the Ancient Weapon Trio. Roger heard the Sea Kings mention the birth of two sovereigns, and we know one of them to be Shirahoshi. I believe that all three Ancient Weapons are royalty. Shirahoshi, as the only confirmed Ancient Weapon we have right now, Momo, and either Vivi or Boa. Momo commanded Zunesha, a potential Earth King, as many people have theorized. He is also royalty from Wano, where Pluton is said to be. The Pluton that is slumbering under Wano that Sakiyuki mentioned is another Earth King for Momo to command, likely a mole, as theorized by Dax Sake, linked below. When the Sea Kings mentioned the two births, Momo had already been born, which leaves the other birth being Vivi. Uranus is the god of the sky, and Vivi may have commanded the weather in Alabasta. This would also explain why Emu is so interested in her. We also have a candidate for a Sky King for her to command the giant snakes of Skypea. This is also why I included Boa, as she is also royalty and has a connection to snakes. The next three trios are much more self-explanatory and clear-cut. Three Marines, with Kobe, Toshigi, and Smoker. Three Supernova, with Kid, Law, and Bonnie. And three Warlords, with Boa, Jinbei, and Law. There are a few other potential trios I will include on the list and on screen but they are far more speculative, so I won't go over them in detail in this video. Which brings us to the section where I will go over Luffy's entire journey to show you that on every island he visited, he either met a Nakama or lost one. There are rules to this chart, but they make complete sense in the context of the story. When looking back through the manga, Oda followed these rules consistently, and I will explain them as they come up. In Romance Dawn, Luffy visited the first three islands and met the first mate trio. Orangetown is the first example of the most important rule. 
when a crewmate either rejects Luffy's invitation or ends up officially leaving the crew, their island is instead the island where they rejoin the crew. On the island where Luffy initially met that crewmate, he meets an animal or ship Nakama instead. In Orange Town's example, Nami both rejected Luffy's invitation and left the crew, then rejoined at Kohuyashi Village, making that her island. At Orange Town, Luffy met Choo Choo instead, the first example of an animal friend that Luffy made throughout the series. Luffy also met Buggy at Orange Town, but because he is the wild card, it doesn't matter where Luffy met him. At the Island of Rare Animals, Luffy met Gaimon and invited him to join the crew. He rejects Luffy's invitation, but will rejoin on Laugh Tail, making Laugh Tail, fittingly, his island. The animal Nakama that Luffy meets instead is the Rare Animals. At Syrup Village, Luffy met Usopp, who leaves the crew during Water 7. He rejoins in the same location, however I believe that his island will ultimately end up being Elba. He will be forced to leave the crew during a Davy back fight against Shanks, who will choose him because of Yasa. At Syrup Village, Luffy instead meets the Going Mary. At the Baratie, Luffy met Sanji, and this actually really gave me a lot more confidence in this theory. I originally thought Sanji left the crew and rejoined in Whole Cake Island, which ruined this whole theory, as that was Pudding's Island. However, when you go back in the manga, Oda left multiple panels straight up telling us that Sanji never officially left the crew. Even during his fight with Luffy, he alludes to leaving the crew, but never outright says it. Sanji never officially left the crew, so the Baratie remains his island. At Kokoyashi Village, Nami rejoins the crew. Luffy visits Logtown, and will revisit by the end of the series, so he met two crewmates there. Luffy met Tashigi literal seconds before Smoker making Smoker the final crewmate Luffy met in the East Blue. The Straw Hats start their voyage in the first half of the Grand Line at Reverse Mountain, where they met Vivi. Vivi ends up rejecting Luffy's invitation at Alabasta. She will rejoin on the opposite end of the world from Reverse Mountain, Mary Joie. Luffy instead met Laboon at Reverse Mountain. At Whiskey Peak, Luffy met Robin. She ends up leaving the crew in Water 7 to rejoin at Eni's Lobby, making that her island. Instead, Luffy met Karu at Whiskey Peak. At Little Garden, Luffy meets Mr. Three, and I'm sure this will be one of the more contentious picks. However, the last time Luffy was with Mr. Three, he gave Luffy the keys to Ace's Cuffs, which I'm sure Luffy greatly appreciates. On Drum Island, Luffy met Chopper, who is forced to leave the crew during a Davy back fight, but is won back soon after. His island is Long Ring Long Ring. Luffy instead befriends the Lappins of Drum Island. At Alabasta, Luffy met Mr. Tim. Oda used a bit of trickery here and made it seem like a good amount of time had passed between Luffy meeting Mr. Tim and landing at Alabasta. If you go back through the chapters before and after Luffy meets Mr. Tim, however, Oda left enough clues to piece together that the same day Luffy met Mr. Tim, he landed on Alabasta. On Jaya, Luffy met Bellamy. Skypea is the next rule. Skypea is a meta-narrative on the whole of One Piece, and is removed, both physically and metaphorically, from the main story. Luffy does not meet a crewmate here, instead, he fulfills an ancient will. This will happen one more time at the end of the series, on another Sky Island, God Valley, where Luffy will fulfill the will of D. At Long Ring Long Land, Chopper is forced to leave the crew and rejoin. At Water 7, Luffy leaves to go to Eni's lobby, then returns. He meets two Nakama here, Frankie and the Thousand Sun. Usopp also rejoins here, but he gets pushed back to Elba. At Eni's lobby, Robin rejoins the crew. At Thriller Bar, Luffy met Brook. Luffy visits Sabaudi, leaves, and returns after the time skip. He meets two crewmates here, Kid and Law. This is why their crews are seemingly being annihilated right now. They need to lose their crews in order to join Luffy's later. Sabaudi is the halfway point of the Grand Line, and is where Luffy is separated from his crew. This is the cutoff for Paradise crewmates. From here on out, Luffy starts meeting the majority of the non-human crewmates, the New World crewmates. Luffy visits Amazon Lily, and returns after Marineford to heal. Luffy met Boa, and when Boa joins, her snake Salome will also join, as the second Nakama of that island. At Impel Down, Luffy met Jinbe. Jinbei did not outright reject Luffy's invitation at Fishman Island, but said he would join in the future. When he leaves again at Whole Cake Island, Luffy affirms, 
I am your captain. Jinbei's island is still in Belvan. Now while the other islands are about Luffy meeting comrades, Marineford is about losing them. Marineford is focused around the deaths of Ace, Whitebeard, and Ors III. Luffy visits Marineford twice, returning to ring the ox bell. The third visit for this trio will be Sphinx Island in the future, where Ace and Whitebeard's graves are. On Rusukaina, the island Luffy trained on over the time skip, Luffy made sure to mention that he made friends with the local animals, making this their island. On Fishman Island, Luffy met Shirahoshi. On Punk Hazard, Luffy met Momo. This is also why I believe that Kinemon will die during the return to Wano. Luffy also met Kinemon here, and Kinemon does not fit onto the final crew list in other ways. At Dressrosa, Luffy barely met Manchair. I believe Rebecca is a red herring, as her dream to live with Kairos has already been fulfilled. At Zoe, Luffy met Karen. At Tato Land, Luffy met Pudding. Luffy visits Wano and will return there in the future. He met two crewmates, Tama and Yamato. Now we reach where we currently are in the manga, and from now on the video is going to be more speculative. Using this chart and the rules already established, we can fit in every island we know for sure Luffy will visit, or will very likely visit by the end of the series. Oda starts off the final saga on Egghead by introducing Bonnie, the final straw hat Luffy meets, and she joins the crew. She almost immediately leaves the crew to fulfill her role as woman who leaves and rejoins, but will rejoin on the next island, full lead. There will be another crewmate who joins around the same time, Smoker. There are many other analyses on why Smoker was always written to be a straw hat, and I will link Mr. Morge's video below, but I will just go over the basics. Smoker as a character is always about following what he considers his true justice. Multiple times throughout the series, he has conceded that the world government was wrong while the straw hats were right. We now know that there are hundreds of marine battleships coming to Egghead, and the last time we saw Tashigi, she was at Full Lead Island to help save Kobe, with Smoker nowhere to be seen. This is so that Smoker can join without Tashigi, as she is not meant to join the crew until Laugh Tale. Smoker will arrive on Egghead soon, and witness the assassination of Vegapunk, watching Luffy trying to stop it. This will finally give him the motivation to turn against the world government, and by the end of Full Lead, Smoker will be a full member of the crew. Now, when Usopp joined the crew, as the third member to join in the East Blue, Luffy got the going merry. When Frankie joined the crew, as the third member of Paradise, Luffy got the Thousand Sunny. I believe when Smoker joins the crew, as the third member of the New World, we will get Punk Records as a ship. This is how the Straw Hats can get a new ship in the New World without making the Sunny obsolete. Punk Records would be more of an add-on to the Sunny, granting knowledge. This would also let Vegapunk live on as an artificial clubouterman, letting him join the crew without actually taking a slot in the final crew list. If Smoker joins on Egghead, the Straw Hats will likely just hijack Punk Records right there. If Smoker joins on Full Lead, it's more likely that the Blackbeard Pirates hijack Punk Records first, leading to Full Lead Island. Regardless, Luffy first met Punk Records on Egghead, so when Bonnie leaves the crew, Punk Records counts as the Nakama Luffy met on Egghead, while Bonnie's will be Full Lead Island. Now Full Lead will be where the first fights against Blackbeard will happen, against the Ten Titanic Captains. There are a few good options for who the Tenth Captain could be, but I believe it is most likely Rouge, as a parallel to Bonnie as the Tenth Straw Hat, both supernovas. I will link Moogletan's video on why Rouge is the Tenth Captain below, as it provides more evidence. Smoker's parallel in the Blackbeard Pirates is Kuzan, both Logia-wielding ex-marines turned pirates. I don't think Blackbeard trusts Kuzan enough to make him a captain yet, but he will rise in the ranks later. After Foe led, Luffy will return to Wano, and this is where Oda will make it seem like Momo will join the crew, as the twelfth member, completing the crew in many people's eyes. As I explained before though, Blackbeard is set up to get more crewmates when he gets his third Devil Fruit, leading to a 15-man crew. This is when Yamato, Carrot, Momo, and Tama will join the crew. This is why Oda left little hints about all of them joining at the end of Wano, only for none of them to join. He was saving it for this reveal. In this chart, they are ordered by when they met the Straw Hats, five from each sea. This is why it's important that Bonnie met Zoro at Sabaudi, so she could fit this pattern while also being the last crewmate Luffy himself met. It is also important to note the relationship between Bonnie's fruit and Momo and Tama. 
They would both be the apprentices of the crew, similar to Shanks and Buggy on Roger's crew. Bonnie's fruit would be able to revert Momo to his true age, to look more like a cabin boy, while also aging Tama up so she can fight. And for all the people who think there needs to be a time skip, Bonnie is a walking time skip. With her awakened fruits, she can likely age up the entire crew to their primes. The next island is Elbaf. I believe Elbaf will be after the return to Wano instead of before it, because I believe Oda is paralleling the first three and last three locations Luffy will visit on the Grand Line. We learn about Elbaf and the giants on the second island Luffy visits in the Grand Line, while Elbaf itself will be the second to last island Luffy visits in the Grand Line. Whiskey Peak is the first island Luffy visited on their trip to the Grand Line, while Lodestar is the last island, where all the paths converge. Laugh Tale's parallel is Reverse Mountain. I believe Laugh Tale will be located inside of Reverse Mountain, more specifically inside of a whale inside of Reverse Mountain, just like Laboon. Hard Rocker has a good video on why Laugh Tale is a whale, which I will link below. On top of that, it fits the oldest treasure hunting cliche that we have never really touched on in a series about pirates. X marks the spot. Now back to Elbaf itself, which will be a Davy back fight against Shanks. Shanks will win at least one round and pick Usopp to join his crew because of Yasop. By the end of the arc, though, he will rejoin, making Elbaf Usopp's island. Now on to Lodestar. This is where all the paths converge and many different factions will be looking for the One Piece, or in the Marines' case, trying to stop anyone from finding it. Anyone and everyone can show up at this point, and this is also likely where Luffy will call in the Grand Fleet. None of the Grand Fleet end up officially joining the crew, so I believe this may count as their island, though I will go over some other possibilities in another video. The short answer to this is that it could end up being the death of Shanks. I think Lodestar is the most likely location for where the Straw Hat and Blackbeard Pirates will fight for the second time, with 15 crewmates. The important matchups being Luffy and potentially Kobe versus Blackbeard, Zoro and potentially Momo versus Kaido, Sanji and potentially Pudding versus Big Mom, Smoker and potentially Tashigi against Kuzan, and Jinbei and, I don't know, Boa versus Weevil. These duo fights will give some future Straw Hats opportunity to board the Sunny right before Laugh Tale. At some point during the chaos, 27 of the final crewmates will find their way onto the Sunny and will be there when Luffy reaches Laugh Tale. At this point, it will look like Luffy reached Laugh Tale with one more crewmate than Roger, 27. However, there will be two more members that Luffy doesn't account for. A stowaway, likely Buggy trying to escape from the chaos due to cowardice, and Gaimon, who will be stranded on Laugh Tale making 29 crewmates. Because Gaimon rejected Luffy's offer on the island of rare animals, Laugh Tale counts as his island. After learning about the true history and the will of D, these 29 crewmates will be the one to recreate the Roger Laugh scene and make a vow over Sake to take down the world government and save Vivi, the 30th and final crewmate to officially join. That's when Luffy and the crew will finally storm Mary Joie and rescue Vivi, completing the crew and making Vivi's island Mary Joie. This is likely where Luffy's forces, and probably Blackbeard's forces as well, will dismantle the world government. This is where the important fights with the Marines and other world government figures will take place. God Valley will be the last major arc in the series. This will be the final fights against the Blackbeard pirates, with Luffy's full crew facing off against Blackbeard's newly formed 30-man crew, at the same spot Roger defeated Rox in the past. This is why Oda has not killed off many of these characters as we have gone through the series, as he needed them alive for this final, series-encompassing battle at the end. I believe that God Valley is a Sky Island, so Luffy does not meet a crewmate or a recurring Nakama here. However, this is where Luffy will fulfill the will of D. I will link a video by Marshall D. Preach in the description that shows some of the evidence that God Valley is a Sky Island. It is important to note that if Luffy ends up destroying Mary Joie, he and the crew will likely not be there at the time. God Valley may be a sky island that, at least currently, is above Mary Joie. The reason Roger may have been too early is because you need a certain sky island to float above the city to destroy it. Mary Joie is destroyed, creating the All Blue and by extension the One Piece, and Luffy faces off against another D clan pirate in a bid to fulfill their versions of the Will of D. The island after is where I believe Sphinx Island fits in the best. There are a few other places Sphinx Island could fit, but I put it here for multiple reasons. 
One, I believe this would be the perfect island for an epilogue that takes place directly after the climax, while Logtown will be the epilogue that takes place years later. Two, I think it would be more fitting for Luffy to not visit Ace's grave until after he's fulfilled his true dream, which likely won't be until after the final villain is defeated. Third, it would give Sabo, Tama, and Yamato time to join the crew, so that they, and the full crew, can pay their respects to Ace. Finally, we end the series with Luffy returning to Logtown for the true epilogue, taking place years later at a different point in the Straw Hats' lives. Now, I'd like to say a few things as I end this video. First, a couple of quotes by Oda. In 2014, during Dress Rosa, Oda said this in a China Times interview. After 17 years, after more and more new characters being created in the story, I couldn't stop inspiration coming into my head. I think I can keep drawing for another decade. And there will be new Nakama, they will show up successively. Yet we haven't had one official crewmate go in since he said that nine years ago. Well, not only have we been getting new crewmates successively throughout the new world, but we've been getting them through the entire series, we just didn't realize it. In 2018, Oda said, my original plan was to assemble a crew of 10 within the first year and a half. After 20 years, the story is about 80% complete, yet there are still only 9 crewmates. He didn't deviate from his original plan. Oda assembled those 10 crewmates in the first 100 chapters, keeping Sabo hidden, of course. They just won't all join until the end. Second, once we learn the name of Bonnie's Devil Fruit, this could be proven through Goro Oase, especially since her number may just be 29 like her father and Luffy. If anyone who understands Japanese could find a meaning to the numbers, we could prove this theory. Third, while I will be releasing a few more theory videos over the next few months, I do not plan on being a full-time YouTuber. I am a musician and a writer and my dream is to open a donations-based record label. Some work in progress music is in the background right now. You can find my music on my YouTube channel and on most streaming services under FreeAZ. It was made to be more lo-fi and experimental. My next release will be more studio quality. The subject matter of a lot of my songs are similar to the themes of One Piece. Freedom, self-actualization, unity, and overthrowing oppression. I will be making a video explaining my dream and what I want from my music and other art further down the line, after these One Piece videos are done. And finally, even though the One Piece may be a physical reward, and is definitely the establishment of a new sea, a new kingdom, a new dawn, Luffy could have never accomplished it if it weren't for the friends he made along the way. Certainly. Certainly.